Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are having a great Saturday so far. Don Terrell here with the Color of Motion, where we highlight people of color and diverse backgrounds in the field of motion graphics, animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. And I am so excited to have everybody join us today. You know the drill. If you are showing up, please let me know so I can show you some love. Um, also, make sure that you share the broadcast. Sharing is caring. We want as many people as possible tuning in and checking this out so you are definitely able to share it. As you know, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. So make sure that you connect with me. Let me make sure I get my hand right here. Make sure that you connect with me on either one of these channels. We are streaming live now. Uh, I hope you, everybody has had a great productive week. Uh, I know we are going into holiday season, which I'll mention this at the end of the show about next week's uh, show, but I hope everybody is safe and well going into this holiday uh, week for sure. I'm just doing uh, a little bit of housekeeping, making sure that uh, I am live on all my channels. Again, please make sure that you share this with your tribe. And uh, as always, like I said, please jump on. Let me know where you're uh, tuning in from and who you are uh, so I can show you some love for sure. Uh, okay. I am live on LinkedIn. Let me make sure that I am uh, broadcasting live on YouTube and uh, Facebook as well. Again, let me know uh, how your week has gone. I'm so excited about our next guest. We were just kind of chopping it up there a little bit and having a great conversation uh, before the show started for sure. So I'm definitely excited about uh, having my friend on today. And make sure I'm broadcasting live on YouTube. And one more, I want to make sure I am, and I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I'm checking on my other monitor here. So I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. Uh, <laughs> one more, and I am live on Facebook. Okay, I like watching it live on LinkedIn. So again, you are joining us. We thank you for joining us on The Color of Motion. See, I got that right. The Color of Motion, where I highlight people of color and from diverse backgrounds, again, in motion graphics, video animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. That's space and industry that I love so much. All right, we are ready to go, and I am so ready to jump into this and have a great sit down with my guest. Just as a little background here, my very special guest and friend that uh, is on is James Mosley II. Uh, James is an animator and TV animation manager, originally from Detroit, Michigan. Can you believe that? That was the first thing we connected with. Uh, he's from Detroit, even though I'm not from Michigan, I'm from Ohio, but close enough. And I have uh, my brother and sister have lived in Detroit forever. So I enjoy the city uh, when I go and visit. But he is from Detroit, Michigan. He began working in TV in 2014, landing a gig as a production intern at Nickelodeon Animation Studio on the Door and Friends preschool animated series. After finishing his schooling, he worked his way into production assistant role in 2016 on the Pinky Malinky animated. That's an interesting name, Pinky Malinky. You see how they 
get some very good young, I won't say silly, but very young names for animated series. Pinky, I was thinking Pinky in the brain for some reason, but Pinky Malinky animated series at Nickelodeon, where he was later promoted to production coordinator on the same show. He worked as a production coordinator on at DreamWorks Animation on Cleopatra in Space. Cleopatra in Space. We're going to talk about that one, too. Cleopatra in Space. For several months as an uh, animated series. Uh, then moved to production coordinator on Nickelodeon's new hit preschool animated series, Santiago of the Seas. Several months later... He received a promotion at Netflix Animation, becoming a production supervisor on an unannounced program for 2020, and is now production manager at Hello Sunshine, a kids and family animation division of Netflix. So join me in welcoming, let me see who tuned in, Eric Perez, going to show you some love, woo, Pinky Malinky. Somebody is a Pinky Malinky fan. So we appreciate you tuning in, Eric, and showing up for sure. Uh, please welcome, help me welcome my uh, very special guest. And I can honestly say a good friend now because we've been having some laughs. Uh, Mr. James Mosley the second. Mr. James. <laughs> I was absolutely laughing when you were talking about Pinky Malinky and Cleopatra in space. Very interesting. <laughs> but I love they them. Come some, they can come up with some shows. <laughs> I had to put Cleopatra in space. <laughs> They're great, though. They're great. Oh, and, oh, Eric is actually my best friend, too. That's, he's like my blood brother, by the All way. All right. We appreciate you showing up there, Mr. Eric, and supporting uh, your man here, your brother. Uh, I appreciate that uh, for sure. Welcome to the show, James. <laughs> How's it going with you? How's it going with you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. These are interesting times, but I am great. Yes, yes. Again, I hope everybody is staying safe because uh, you know what's going on. They're talking about maybe another lockdown. So we'll have to see how it goes. But make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, wearing your mask and doing the sanitizer and taking all the precautions so we can go ahead and get through this pandemic for sure. Uh, but I hope everybody is doing well. Ah, Miss D. Britt Steen. So proud of your little brother. <laughs> that, yeah, that's my sister. That's my real sister. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say, man, you got a lot of family. Just have a whole, I thought I had a large family, but yeah. <laughs> like everybody's coming in. All shades and colors, man. Um, hey, hey, hey. Is she in Detroit as well, or is she back in Detroit? She she's over in uh she's in Michigan she's in Canton Michigan okay Canton Canton mm -hmm. uh, like I said we immediately uh, connected James and I um, and kind of found that little synergy um, like I said I'm not from Michigan I'm from Ohio but hey if you're from Canton and you and or Michigan and you've been to, and you've been to Cedar Point then you've been to where I'm from so if you know Cedar Point then you know where I'm from. Great landmark. That's a great landmark because yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, yeah, when we first... like Sandusky. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then I say, well, you know, you, you ever you been to see the point? Yeah, I've been to see the point. Okay, then you've like, been to Sandusky. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I know exactly where that is. You've been to Sandusky. You've been to Sandusky. <laughs> but we found the instant connection that way. Like I said, my brother and sister have lived there since they left home so they that's their that's their home and i do enjoy uh going to detroit and visiting i know it has a rich i love really do love the art art scene in detroit it has a really nice uh art scene you are the first person that i have talked to that's brought up the art scene it really does have a nice art scene i, I do like yep. that um, right 
Uh, it is uh, uh, got a lot going on for it, for sure. So I'm looking forward to uh, sitting down, diving in, and talking with you, brother. Like I said, we've had a, a great laugh and, and definitely have found, found some good connections here. So I appreciate that. I'm ready, man. Oh man. Well, well. First off, let me let me let me ask you: How did you get started? I mean, were you always artistically inclined, or was this something you kind of picked on later up? Later on down the line, or you know, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think I mean, if you if you talk to my family, I've always been kind of artistically inclined, as you just said. Um, when I was about four, I used to sit in front of the TV and watch a lot of like Nickelodeon shows, okay. which is crazy because I ended up working there. But I would watch a lot of Nickelodeon shows and that's a good circle of life type of thing. <laughs> oh man, you you wouldn't believe like some of the talks that I have with my mother, um, you know, I used to like, at Dora, Dora, especially, I would draw my own characters to be in the shows and I wanted to be a show creator at like four. Um, and I would draw on our walls and get a whooping for it as a kid. And um, <laughs> I hope that, I hope the police don't come after my mom now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I would rightfully so. I would get. We um, heard. You, we heard you beat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, this is a new time we're in. <laughs> so that's the case. My mom would have been taken away. <laughs> right. <laughs> taken away from me. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, this is the Color of Motion podcast, so I'm sure it's similar. <laughs> we know how it goes. We know how it goes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I. <laughs> I would I would draw like everywhere. I would draw like in church, uh, like on on my mom's envelopes. Um, I would draw on on our walls, like on pieces of paper all around the house. So yeah, yeah. it was yeah. always kind of been there to answer your question. Yeah. So was this your idea of what you wanted to do, or was that just something that you liked? Because I knew when uh, I was growing up, I wanted to be. A, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a comic strip artist. I mean, that was my thing, and I was always drawing. I didn't kind of think anything else of what I wanted to be, but really, yeah, was this something that you always, you know, this is what I want to do, or was this just a hobby or, and something that you were good at, but you were always thinking you would get into something else? Uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, as I was growing up, um, it was a hobby, but I got into basketball when I around the fourth grade, I think. And um, and at that point, from then on, I just thought I would be going to the NBA one day, you know, <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Not tall. At a, I, I, there was no hint or sign that I would be going to the NBA, but I just thought that. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Miles did say, boy, you better think of something else. Uh, <laughs> Or something. Well, you know, there was like an inner parent inside of myself when I was like 16. And at that point, I knew I wasn't going. And I was like, I need to figure something out now. Okay. So at that point, did you say, okay, I think art or, you know, my talent would be something that I could go into? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think around at that point, at that point, you know, it was kind of, it was like, it was, a bit like getting into a divorce um, with with your dreams, like when I was around 16 and um, I had to figure out what I was good at that I could excel at, um, what I had a natural knack for. And I remember I could draw. And, um, you know, at the time, Aaron Magruder was huge. And I just started drawing comics for our school newspaper in high school. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what was your kind of journey through, OK, grade school to college? to actually getting in the workforce? Um, so I would say, you know, I, I think around middle school, you know, I, I, I would I would still dabble into drawing and stuff. But then, you know, like as we said, like at 16 in high school, um, I started drawing comics for the school newspaper. And then I saw I was getting a lot of feedback from people in the, in the hallway saying that they liked it. And um, you know, my parents were already divorced, so my, my father, he lived in Santa Barbara, California. And, um, 
you know, I was already kind of like, at that point, I was like off and running. I was making animated shorts. I was writing oh, wow. myself. Wow. I was posting them everywhere, had my friends doing the voiceovers and everything. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to be like a show creator at some point. So, you know, I, I just moved out to California with my dad. And started. Okay. So did you go to uh, design school, art school out there, or did you just kind of fall into the work workforce and just work your way up? Are, are you allowed to say like curse words on here? Because I was going to say, oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> Like I said, it's live. We got to roll with it. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a bleep button on this one. A, well, I just, well, I, well, I'll say this then, Don. No. I'll say, oh, heck no, I didn't go to art school. It cost too much at the time. You know? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and it's funny because, <clears throat> I mean, I went, to, I went to the Art Institute here in Houston. But I tell people, or I tell, you know, up and comers now, there's so many great online courses and classes that teach you much more targeted uh, information or whatever it is that you want to do that are taught by instructors that are actually working in studios that are way less than what you would pay for art institute or, you know, and I'm not knocking any of the schools because like I said, I'm alumni and a lot of people have come out of Savannah, you know, School of Art. But hey, if you're an animator, there's a School of Motion, there's Nomen School. So many. There's so many, there's so many online great schools that are really uh, teaching uh, animators um, and visual effects people really practical type of things. If there's one thing I learned this year, I don't know whether it's you know age or or experience but the answers are just out there you know like you can find it like whatever you want to learn how to do youtube like, university <laughs> youtube university man like <laughs> you can learn whatever you want to know you can find out on youtube it's it's a video somewhere yeah yeah absolutely um yeah, and I can I can get into that later, you know, about like I, I've never went to business school, but there's so many things that I watch on YouTube about business and it's just it, it's just it just feels good. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think that's what I love I love about this time. There's so many platforms um and uh things out entities out there to where whatever you wanna figure out and learn, there's you can. You can just jump online. Um, mm -hmm. You're able to connect with so many other people now with social media and everything. Um, that is just, and there's so many great tools and software out there. I mean, it's just a great time uh, for content creators now. If you're that don't <clears throat> that don't necessarily have to go the traditional route if they don't want to, like schooling for 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 example. If you're wanting to learn something, of course, like I said, there's YouTube and there's uh, Google, there's online. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a filmmaker, uh, you don't necessarily have to go to a big studio. You can put your movie and film on YouTube and nine times out of ten, they'll find you there. If you got a good product, um, photography, there's Instagram. So there's so many places out there now for the content creator. Yep. Yeah, I I love it to be honest. You know, I <clears throat> I know certain people have a different relationship. <clears throat> excuse me, with change. Yeah, in the world we're in now. But for me, I'm I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah, and and like I said, I'm you know I you know date myself. I'm a you know older. older. <laughs> you're you're 26, Don. What are you talking? About? You're not 26. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody's looking at the gray hairs like yeah, right. <laughs> he's twenty six. <laughs> I'm a shut up. I'm a shut up. A little bit, little bit older than that. And I remember, like I said, uh, because and it's fortunate. And like I said, when I went to the Art Institute, they weren't even teaching computers, so computers weren't even a part of the program. I was taught in traditional design and advertising, you know you know, basic graphic design and advertising. It wasn't but a 
couple of years after I graduated that they started implementing computer animation and computers into the schooling. So wow. a little how old are. And then when I, you know, started in the business, I was doing a lot of production work, you know, design and graphic design. But we were doing it by hand. They were drawing all the artwork for uh, newspapers by they had a team of a room of artists that would draw all the artwork and the clothing. They That's shoot, crazy to me. Like they shoot the, they shoot the artwork with a camera and we paste it up on a board, a physical board that was shot. So I know the the, the early stages of when they were doing everything by hand before desktop publishing and computers were really able to do the production work and the design work and stuff. So but I do enjoy seeing the gradual production of how computers has really changed the dynamic of things. That how how jarring was that for you? Like to be, you know, doing things one way all these all these years and then yeah, suddenly yeah. I I <laughs> it's funny because I had to just I had to lie to do it because at the time, like I said, they were doing it uh I used to work for a sporting goods store. And in the advertising department and, you know, all the clothing and gear and stuff like that. Like I said, they used to draw it by hand and everything. Wow. Um, but then they were closing down the division out in California and they were using computers. So they asked everybody at the job, hey, do y'all know how to lay out stuff with computers? <laughs> yeah, I can use computers. Yeah, I ain't gonna give up my job. I, I, I said, yeah, I know how to, I know how to use computers. And stuff. So I learned by self teaching how to use computers and everything, and just you know, you online and you know, people that I would come across that were you know a little knowledgeable. So I wasn't school taught in how to use computers. I was keep your job. <laughs> love you know just the whole like i said progression of seeing how technology has just grown so were you like you did you like using a certain animation software or were you more traditional hand-drawn animation Talk. I'm so excited to be talking about this. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> um, yeah, I I would use. So when I was like 16, I started a YouTube channel. I made up in my mind that this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I wanted to start making shows because Aaron Magruder had got a show. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started using Flash and okay. I used Flash for years since then. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's uh, Adobe Animate now. Since, oh, shoot, shoot. Yeah, that, yeah, since Adobe bought it, they renamed it Animate. Uh, but yeah, uh, I love using Flash uh, and that type of thing. So you never got into, your thing was more 2D, not 3D. You know, as we were talking, I just remembered, um, I was using Flash from, from high school to like the middle of college. And uh, no, actually, just a little bit after the beginning of uh, going to Santa Barbara City College, I, I oh, man, well, I obtained Maya. <laughs> <laughs> I obtained Maya. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually and I actually like taught myself how to use Maya. And I like I like would lock myself in a room and all the troubleshoot. Up troubleshooting I would do, I would print out sheets and just paste them on a wall over. Yeah. All I could never, like I said, I know it's industry standard, but I had just not been able to dive into to Maya for some reason. I, Why not? Man, it was just a lot. Because I know when <laughs> I first, it was. When I first started learning and getting into 3D, I was uh, doing graphic design for a uh, turnkey system or a turnkey company or a company that built turnkey systems like video wow. editing systems and they were selling 3d software you know along with the editing system oh, wow. so they would let me come in and sit down and you know 
get on the computer and learn the software and stuff. But they were selling soft image at the time. Oh, I forgot about it. Yeah, I don't know if you remember something. <laughs> I, but that, and I was so excited because that's what, at the time, that's what they had used to do Jurassic Park. So I said, man, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Man, when he brought out all these stacks of manuals, he said, <laughs> Soft mind is just plop like he must. Like I said, I got a bunch of them on my shelf right now. He must have brought out seven or eight thick, thick ass. I want to say it, thick <laughs> ass books of manual. Do it, Don. <laughs> I'm gonna cut some my own show. It's seven <laughs> thick ass books of manuals like this. Holy yeah, holy. And I said, "What is this? This is the manual for soft minds." <laughs> I was like, "That just did it." Ooh. Who had time to read that back then? Oh man, the people that really wanted to learn it, I guess, because <laughs> I was just I was turned off. That turned me off of 3D for a while. I understand, <laughs> man. That's traumatizing. <laughs> and then they started selling Lightwave. And I don't oh, know about Lightwave. Yeah, and at that time, Lightwave was really big on TV. They were using it a lot for TV, like Babylon 5 and um Sequest and all those sci-fi TV shows because it was really fast and they could really crank out a lot of great animation with it. Oh, but I opened that up and it was just so much easier for me because it was it was well their bill was it was created by artists for artists and mm -hmm. so like soft Mods was just too technical. It was like technicians <laughs> wrote that for. <laughs> For artists, so you had to be a mathematician to figure out things and stuff like that. I was like, you had to know how to cure cancer, just like, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Lightwave just made it so much easier for me to understand 3D, and mm -hmm. so I was able to really enjoy it again and jump back into it. And then I just transitioned, I still use Lightwave, but I kind of started transitioning into Modo. Um, what's that? The people, well, that's another 3D. You should check it out. It's a really good 3D software. But the people and the programmers that were in that created Lightwave kind of broke off into their own company and developed their own software, and it was Modo. Um, and now uh, the Foundry, which owns uh, uh, like Nuke and uh, some other, they own Nuke and Katana and some other uh, animation and uh, visual effects software. And so they bought it and now it's part of the Foundry. But wow. it's a really great uh, software, really uh, robust. Um, it's They just released the new version of it. But it's it, like I said, I had started using that. Plus, it was affordable. It was a software that I, I help. Lightwave and my and motor were affordable. You know, like 3D Studio Max and Maya, you were paying like <laughs> you, were cool, you were paying a few thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, three, four, five thousand yeah. dollars. So that was something that <clears throat> that was something that individual could buy and, and, and get and use. So that's how I kind of really like doing it. Uh, so how did you move from animation into product onto the production side of it oh um well so, so i i had a talk with myself i think um and you know not in a schizophrenic way just <laughs> more like <laughs> just more like a, a you know an introspective talk with myself about um i think i was like a i was like an intern at nickelodeon and um I was just kind of thinking about whether or not I wanted to create shows or not. Um, and, you know, obviously I, I did a really good job on, on the show I was on. I was on Doran Friends at the time um, in 2014. And I had to really think about like, like where I wanted to pivot because I felt like I had learned a lot as an intern about the different departments and stuff. Um, and I ended up getting hired uh, while I was an intern as like a part-time PA or something like that. They really, they must've really wanted me bad. I think, um, there was a great line producer there that, that pulled some strings for me. Um, so I don't, I don't want to put her name out there just, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but she, uh, she, you know, she pulled some strings and I became a part-time PA. And, you know, when I was a PA, I just really kind of saw how, you know, I feel like I'm pretty good with people and yeah. how great I was with people on the show and stuff like that. Um, and then I also just kind of had a revelation to where, you know, I, there's an awakening happening right now where we don't see a lot of black people or people yeah. of color in business positions. Um, yeah, and more executive type of, you know, the positions that really kind of get the, the projects out there. Exactly. So, so what specifically, you know, does a production manager do? Oh, man. Okay. A position and a job. What If you were explaining that, somebody that said, oh, I want to be production manager, what, what do you do? Okay, well, I, I'll try to give you the short answer because we might need two uh, interviews, I think. But <laughs> but in general, I, I feel like, you know, I've been in, in a management or some kind of management role for about a year and a half now. Yeah. Um, and what it feels like I do is kind of set the table for some of the teams that I'm overseeing, some of the production teams. Um, I'm always kind of looking at the schedule and seeing if we're on track or not. Um, and if you know any potential delays or delays that come up uh, happen, then then um, then I mean, one is my job to kind of foresee that yeah. a delay is going to happen and uh, hopefully negate that with a yeah. solution. Yeah. Um, or if a delay is happening, then you know I kind of try to come up with a solution um, alongside like my line producer. Yeah. You know, we'll kind of think about it, but it, it really just feels like an overseer role to be honest and. Just kind of getting things in place for the team that you're overseeing. So do you feel like that's where your core strength is as opposed to animating? Or is that just something that you like better? Um, I, I think my core strength is people, uh, to, to be honest. I, I think the technical part of this job is something that, that I am get, getting good at and am good at right now, but I can always get better. Yeah, but I just think the the core strength is um, people. But, you know, when it comes to animation and stuff, I think it is. I try to have a foot in the creative just so just to help me better in production so that I'm not like asking people to do too much in too little time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Do you miss it? I mean, do you miss actually sitting down and creating the animations yourself? I, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Um because there was a there was a time when I used to just spend like hours animating at my desk where it just felt like it was there was so much to prove and um and you know just trying to make the best content that people could appreciate, you yeah. know. And it was something cathartic about it, you know, that I kind of missed. Yeah. Sure. Gotcha, gotcha. So what do you feel like uh, the biggest lessons that you learned along the way? If you if you had to pick one good lesson that you've learned well what do you think that would be i think i think one lesson would be to uh move a lot freer and be more confident in the person that i was i think um because you know i think i i, I don't i think there's been times in my career where i haven't spoken up enough uh because you know i didn't have the confidence that i have today yeah you know? yeah um and you know i i think if you if if you are somewhere, if somebody puts you in a position for who you are, then you should just kind of let you should just show your personality. Yeah, you know, yeah. as vibrantly as you can. That's good. Well, everybody, like I said, we are uh, hope you are enjoying this conversation as much as I am. Please again, still throw. Uh, uh, we got a, a message here from Mr. Eric Perez. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> yeah, there is no post. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we want to reshare it, we can edit it out. But <laughs> I, I, everybody that heard the curse words, so we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> hey man, we're edgy today. All right? <laughs> yeah, it's, this is my edgy show here. So we're gonna roll with it, baby. We're gonna roll with it. Everybody, please make sure that you share this out because we want to get this out to everybody. So James swears, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm going on record though. I do I do swear though. I do swear. I may not do it a lot here, but you know. Oh man. So what what do you think 
the biggest challenge that you faced as far as uh, pro- being a production manager? Is it is it the keeping people together on a project the biggest challenge? I, I think if you I think if you are running the culture on the show correctly, then uh, you you don't have that problem, and that that is not the problem that I that I see. Mm-hmm. Um, keeping people too like on the show, um, I think the biggest pro the, the the biggest challenge I think is um, let me think about that really quick. I okay, well, I mean, can it be a relevant challenge to today? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the the challenge is you know trying to keep the morale of your team up like during these times for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you, and speaking of which, have you, how has COVID and what we're going through affected the mm-hmm. industry from your point of view and yeah. the things that you've been doing? So has it had a big effect with that? Because I know a lot of companies in a lot of animation studios automatically kind of shift, even though they were probably doing it a lot more than most average businesses working remotely. So they shifted really quickly to having people work remotely. Um, was that the case with you, or did you see any type of major hit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when, so when COVID first hit, um, obviously, you know, every TV production is running on a schedule. Um, and when when COVID hits, it, it, it kind of, uh, ob- there's obvious delays. Yeah, on the schedule, so it's gonna put it's gonna push the schedule out. Um, one of the first things that I saw when when COVID hit was that uh, we had to immediately we had to take like a two week period just to give people equipment, you know, um, and yeah. equipment to do the to do the job that we're asking. Yeah. Um. So that takes time, and that and that just you know more time means a longer schedule, which means yeah, more time. You know, the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that that's one of the first things I kind of noticed. I think with COVID, it's just you you can't you can't expect to have the same schedule in a different time. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a different time. You know, and internet internet is a big challenge too. Not everybody got fast internet. <laughs> he said, "Man, you haven't moved in one minute." Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, my internet's gonna catch up in a second. <laughs> well, you yeah. gotta think about it too, though, Don. Like, like if you're making big TV backgrounds, right? Yeah. <laughs> that takes like you gotta have internet to upload those. For yeah. Stuff, oh, like. yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> oh man, which which I guess leads to the question though: Did that make your job? Uh, obviously it made it a little different because you were kind of communicating things through Zoom calls or whatnot. Did it make it more challenging or did you just kind of navigate and find the way to do it? Yeah, yeah. So one of one of my jobs, I think, as a production manager is to be an effective communicator and to, to articulate what the needs are um and and just to keep everybody aligned you know and everybody on the same track making sure information gets to the right place um and that's hard to do remotely you know because not everybody is always around the computer some people have children that they have to tend to rightfully so Um, there's just so many things happening now when you're at home and so it's hard to you know kind of corral everybody it's a it's a challenge but it's not too hard for me i think yeah yeah um and I think that um, I, I think and I, th- I think it's just I think that's mainly it. Just trying to, like, keep the communication effective um, and everything's through emails. And then and then obviously I get Zoom fatigue, too. Yeah, I think uh, Zoom stock then went up through this whole. <laughs> I know I missed it. Oh, like I said, if you if you were part of Zoom, Zoom just is making a killing through the whole whole pandemic for sure. Um, Not too late to invest either. No, no. <laughs> it's going to go on for a little bit. So you get in, you can still jump in there. You seem to you seem to gravitate 
towards children's animation. Is that kind of what you like doing or do you like the anime or the real cerebral type of animation or theory? I mean, what's your kind of take on what you enjoy kind of? Yeah, no. Okay. You're very observant for that. Um, I, I do love, I, I've learned just recently that I like preschool. Preschool. Okay. okay. I like preschool animation for for a creative reason and a production reason though. Yeah, yeah. Um, the production reason is because obviously like preschool shows are a lot more simple. Yeah. Your characters to keep track of on the production side, backgrounds, et cetera. Yeah. So I like that so that I have time to connect with my employees and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, I think it is uh, such a powerful medium at that age that it makes such a big impact. I remember, and and like again, people, I'm dating myself. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know because I can say I remember. You know, of course, Saturday morning cartoons. Just you know, Saturday mornings aren't quite the same as they used to be. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite the same as they used to be, but I remember a, uh, and you might remember this too or know of it, Schoolhouse Rock. Yep, yep. That was such, a, and they were just like little mini animated commercials in between the cartoons, but they were such a powerful way of explaining so many different things in school that you just normally like how a bill was made, and they made it in such a jingly. You know, way that ah, I'm just a bill. I'm only a bill. I'm only a <laughs> capital. I tell you, I can remember. That's how impactful it is. You can still remember the tunes that you know were sung with it, and it's how you learned about government, or you know, they had one on on a noun or a verb, and you just yeah. remembered it. But it's such an impactful thing, which is why I love you know animation and, and cartoons because I know the power in of how it can make an impact on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually the, yeah, that's one of the other reasons that I like preschool because you can, you know, um, you can influence minds the right way. If you, if you're trying to do it the right way, you can influence minds at a young age uh, for the good. Yeah. Gotcha. We're going to take a little shift here and kind of talk about, um, uh, how you see the industry going um, as far as in the future and diversity. We're starting, of course, during this time, we've had a lot of social things going on as well. But and so we're starting to see more diverse uh, people start to come up in mm -hmm. the forefront and stories start to get told in a more diverse way. Um, you see that as 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 being a a big challenge that a lot of companies are are going through now or going to go through. At this point, I, I don't think. Uh, to be honest, I don't think any company has a choice at this point. Um, there's a there's a large awakening happening <clears throat> where people of color. Uh, you know, specifically black people, especially right now, uh, want to see themselves and their stories out there. Yeah. Um, and not only that, they want to see themselves in those rooms. Yeah. You know, where the decisions are being made. So <clears throat> I don't think it should, I don't think it will be a challenge for some companies now. Um, and, and I think it's just, you know, there was a lot of excuses, I think, in the past where uh specifically you know with making movies with an, like an all black cast where they thought movies wouldn't do well overseas but it, there's like no excuse at this point with the success of like black panther and some other shows uh specifically animation with like spider-verse yeah yeah um, that was a great animated animated movie spider-verse Spider yeah so at this point, at this point, what I'm trying to say is it's a it's it's a smart, even smart business move. Yeah. To start making these stories. Yeah, for sure. So, I think what kind of <laughs> I don't know, I think what kind of that was part of it, but I think another thing with me was the fact that okay, if they did throw a a, a, a 
black character or a, a Asian character or Indian character. It just seemed like it was a, a white character that was colored. Yeah. You know, black, and it, it just didn't resonate well, which I think kind of made it more off-putting that they would just slap a black face, <laughs> you know, slap a, 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 a Asian face on a white character. You got white features, and it's just. <laughs> So that's why I feel that there's such a importance of having diverse content creators, having diverse directors, yeah. having diverse writers that really are telling a authentic story mm -hmm. that's true to them that can still resonate with people. I think like the, you made a great point with Black Panther. It was all black cast, but it did so obviously did blockbuster well to where it appealed to everybody. And right. I say stories, everybody loves a story, and we all share these same experiences. We all want the same things. We all love, we all laugh, we all cry. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think there's it's it's impossible for uh, a white person to go into a black movie and still come out of it feeling some kind of connection with the story. Yeah, yeah. You, you're right. I, I mean, you and I kind of talked about this before, but there are just like fundamental truths as a human yeah. being that yeah. will connect us all. Fundamental truths, for sure. For yeah. sure. So do you see it as um, kind of a a uh, top-down thing happening with executives doing it or more of a bottom-up where content creators and people of other colors are going to start to create their own own uh, studios and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that? Or do you see it as a kind of meeting in the middle? I think, I think all of it will happen. Um, I think some some companies will uplift um, people of color in executive roles. I think there will be more content creators that are making content that tell the stories of all of us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some of those people of color in those executive roles can facilitate those stories getting out. Yeah. Um, and but I also do think that, you know, people of color will start their own animation studios at some point. You know, you and I talked about something that yeah. I'm very excited to see. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. Tyler Perry opens up an animation studio. Uh, yeah, like I said, he's got the Tyler if you're watching or if you can. <laughs> Come on, Tyler. You know, if, if you need somebody to head the studio, I'll be bored. <laughs> Be more than happy to do it, but hey, you got the funds. Uh, <laughs> and then, like you said, there's so we have such a plethora of people that are affluent in yeah. our race that have the the financial backing to put behind a lot of uh, content out there. So I'm, I would hope that they start to gravitate. But I also know, in just speaking with you and some of the other content creators that I've been fortunate to connect with that we're already hungry for starting our own thing. And so I know it's not going to be, like you said, too long before we start seeing a lot more studios from diverse people creating their own content. And, and, and again, now in this time, there's so many different platforms out there now, like I said, YouTube that, Hey, if nobody's going to back us, we could just, you know, start our thing and grow our base with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Eventually, studios are going to come for sure. I mean, and I could even see, you know, some uh, some diverse content creators just going straight to the streaming services with a deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I will say this. Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, I have seen from what I've been watching and reading and just uh, check it out online. Netflix, I will have to say, to my view, is by far the, the main company that's really stepped out there and brought in so many diverse 
talented directors, and even in executive position. I've seen uh, a lot of posts on LinkedIn where they've hired executive directors and people in more executive roles. So I will give Netflix some kudos for that. You know, yeah, they can when they they're yeah. taking the step forward. I agree. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of things I can't talk about having yeah. worked at Netflix, but man, when you see the content that yeah. comes into that place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is why, which is why Netflix blew Blockbuster away because they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Blockbuster, but <laughs> Netflix is ahead of the curve as far as the content and how they got it out there. So yeah. that's why I say I, I I give Netflix a lot of credit because they are a forward thinking company for sure from from what I've seen, uh, not just in animation, just in their own uh, content movies that they're uh, you know own block Netflix movies that they're producing and putting out. They're everything outside of the box of what normal TV and other services are doing for sure. Yeah, they they and they the the thing I like about Netflix is that they try everything. Like literally everything. <laughs> and they see what sticks. <laughs> and and hey, they put out like I said, I you know, I I got rid of my cable. I got Netflix. That's about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> You got me, Netflix. <laughs> I think that I you know, Netflix, so. <laughs> and I because I think more people are doing that now. Are, yeah, you know, yeah. they only they, have streaming services. Yeah, they saw the writing on the with, like I said, which is why they just crushed Blockbuster because they saw where it was going as yeah. far as streaming, and they've always been ahead of the curve as far as putting content out there and different kind of content. So I'm so excited to see a lot of people. I'm trying to, I'm really working hard. At, at Frank, if you're watching, <laughs> I want to get you on the show, Frank Abney. Uh, I'd love to see that. Frank, he's getting there, putting, uh, putting his short out. Yeah. Um, canvas. I'm so excited to to really see the full fleshed out uh, movie of it for sure. So congratulations to him. Same. Um, my guy Joshua, he didn't say it, <laughs> but I already know that that guy, that guy Joshua, he didn't, he didn't actually say it. Netflix, so you don't got to worry about it. I can read between the lines that you're already going to do something with Team Supreme. So <laughs> I'm excited to see that come out as well. So <laughs> I actually don't know. So like I, that, that would be great if that happens. You yeah, know, I, I mean, I already know. I mean, <laughs> trust me, Netflix, he didn't say anything. He didn't, he didn't have to say anything. I already know because it's such a great anime. Right. It has the potential to have such great appeal that I already right. know Netflix is going to do something with it. It's just a matter of when. It's, it's, you know, I know he's going to be a director within the next couple of years. I'm going to say that on record. I already, I'm gonna do I already, that in the universe, man, because you're yeah, in the next couple of years. So that, that's a smart project. So yeah, so great. so excited to see where he takes that. So uh, okay. I just love the content that's coming out. I'm so excited about just the connections that I've been able to make. Um, Trying to get Matthew Cherry. So if you know Matthew Cherry or have a connection with Matthew Cherry, I, I want to know him. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. So if this happens to come by you, Matthew, I want to get you on the color motion. So. That'd be cool though, man. And that that guy's out of here too. Like yeah, like I said, he you know just kind of opened the door even wider when he won you know the Oscar. Like I said, I know there's a lot of. Uh, great animated shorts out there and animated movies out there um that don't even get awards but they're just well crafted stories and really artistic pieces that are out there so i that's what i love about this time that you there's you know you, Me too. you can see so much out there this is an important time um you know and i mean for all people of color just it's an important time for everybody because you know, even even white people can enjoy this 
this, this celebration of content that that's happening, this explosion. It should. I mean, like I said, stories are stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it does nothing but bring us closer together. If we right. can all understand, you know, a story that's told in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. it does nothing but I feel serve us that much more. Agreed, man. So, so if you were to go back, if you were able to go back in time, what would you tell and, and stand in front of your younger self? What one thing would you tell yourself? <laughs> I I think I would. I think I oh, that's a good question, man. I think I would tell myself. To outside, really outside of buying Apple stock, man, you need to get Apple. <laughs> <laughs> right. myself, man. You need to get Apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be great, actually, to tell myself that or Zoom, but but on a serious um, note, people. <laughs> yeah, but what, what would you tell yourself? Uh, like I said, if you were able to stand in front of your younger self, I think I would just tell myself. You know, it it really is about. Because, you know, I'm not going to lie. When I was younger, it was all about being rich someday mm -hmm. and, like, being famous. Yeah. At a, at a young age, too, which is so crazy. Like, now that I think about it. But I think I would just tell myself that it it is really just about the character of, of who you are. Yeah. Like, and, and you know, I, my younger self probably would be like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> but, but I, you know, I would just have to live and see it. But I can kind of see it now, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, where do you see where do you see the industry going in the future? What you're doing now, where do you see it going? Where would where do you want it to go? I I would like for it to to go to um, like I I want to see more. I would definitely see more stories uh, like we've been kind of talking about, um, but I would like to see more movies. You know, specifically, um, more more move like blockbuster animated films yeah. with black characters. Um, you know, at, at the forefront of the cast. You know, I would I would like to see that. Um, and the reason why I say that is because before Spider Verse, I had like ideas of like how would like a blockbuster animated film with like a, a the main character being black be like like with, with actually what well, actual music that i listen to you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what would that look like and when i saw spider verse i was like that's it that's it i want to see more of that yeah i think like i said it, it which is kind of the main reason why like i said i i really am excited about the show and, and passionate about the show is I know how powerful an image that is to see people that look like you that are that aren't the typical type of movies that are put out, which was why I feel like Black Panther was just so far ahead because it's like, wow, kings and queens and regal, just the clothes, the the just the airness of it was just so far beyond what i would think you know Even the technology side of it oh yes you yeah. know i thought it was good i thought they were going to be like in the grass field somewhere or something <laughs> it's funny, it's funny funny or not funny but it's funny because i'm talking with a uh um and he actually is going to be on the show in a few weeks but he's an animator from africa and oh, we were talking about just the perception of what you know, people were thinking and the animation industry is starting to slowly grow in Africa. And he was saying, yeah, you know, people kind of think that, you know, the monkeys jumping up at you, <laughs> you type of thing. And it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, crazy, it's a crazy perception, you know? you know, knowing that we come from kings and queens, it was just such a, like I said, mind blowing thing. And then, like you said, just the technology of the sci-fi about behind it was just it was such a great movie. It, it is so impactful in such a way. It's so sad that uh, 
uh, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, he passed away uh, for sure because I I knew I just knew he was going to do two or three more sequels on that for sure. Uh, it's just heartbreaking, man. It's just so heartbreaking uh, that he is just not going to be with us uh, to do that. But he made such an impact, such an impact, and so many other movies as well. Uh, outside of Black Panther, you know, yeah, movies I didn't even know about. Oh, yeah, yeah, like I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Brown, he played every black hero, the third, <laughs> he every black hero, and, and every black person we had, he played, you know, so. yeah, he did. So, so he, you know, he just made such an impact, but it was just such a great movie because, like I said, just the regalness and airness of it was just so far beyond what I was thinking, you know, when it was about. Same, man. They did it right. Oh, man. And just did it so well that it just blew every movie that they made (laughs) to that point. I think that's what really was like, damn. (laughs) My my girlfriend works at Disney, so so I I just kind of, I'm going to silently nod there, Don. (laughs) didn't think it would do that good but, <laughs> but, you know, it really did exceed my expectations too it though did. i mean it did i mean and i was talking i was talking to somebody the other day and i was um uh, we were talking about just and i can't think of her name but she won oscar for best clothing wardrobe she was oh. Um, I cannot think of her name, but she is such a talented fashion designer, and she just nailed the wardrobe all across the board. I mean, it was just such, a, you know, such a great thing to see for sure. Such a great thing Makes for sure. Um, like I said, we and we have gone well into an hour for sure. <laughs> We've just scratched the surface, people. Of, <laughs> of what? <laughs> I was happy, man. That blew by, man. It goes by quick. Like I said, normally, uh, you know, I uh, tend to typically keep it around 45 minutes, people, but me and James have hit it off so well. I know. I mean, so I can well. go to 30 if you want, man. I oh, man. Oh, man. I appreciate that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there any other... I mean, like you said, you're you're you like the uh, preschool age, but what do you watch? I mean, what oh. I mean, when you watch animation movies, what type of movies do you like watching outside of what you do as a job? Yeah, yeah, like when it when it comes. Okay, so the 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 honest answer is I don't watch much animation. Okay, okay, I don't like I. I if I do watch it, it's because I'm specifically researching. Um, so I can give you some of the things that I've looked at, you know, just on my own so I can understand what people like because I, I do study what people like. Um, I'm a huge Charlie Brown fan. Oh, man. I'm a peanuts, peanuts nut from the start. <laughs> Pe- you too. Yeah, that, that was the main reason why I kind of got into comic strips and cartoons. I was I was checking out every report was about Charles Schultz. I was checking out every book I could find about Charles Schultz and like him as yeah, that guy's interesting. As a, him as a cartoonist. So yeah. if I had to do a school report, I was always going into the library, hey, we got any new books on Charles Schultz or you know, this and that and me too, I was man. Peanuts nut. I really was. Yeah, he he's good. Um, obviously, I'm a huge Boondocks fan. That's yeah. what got me into this for real, for real. Yeah. So Aaron McGruder. I watch Boondocks. I watch. Oh, you know what I like? Actually, I like a lot. Um, what is it? I, I forgot the name because they haven't come out with a new season, but I think it's Love, Death, and Robots. Or yes, that was a great... That, see, that's why I say Netflix is so far ahead of themselves when they put out conflict, content. content. That mm-hmm. is a great, that's why I got that on my list. Love, Death, and Robots. It was such a well-done animated uh, series. That Real has got fun. to be my favorite animated series. 
really was. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm kind of a lover of 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 all types. Uh, Gotta watch. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, God? What's the uh, it's an anime, but it's uh, it's a black samurai. And actually, the guy that created it kind of because there is an actual uh, African American that was like the only African American that made a samurai. Um, but he kind of loosely based the anime on it that he created. And they made that into a uh, animated. Man, I hate to get up and go get it. Oh, you can. Like, I'm, I'm let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get up. It's another room. Okay. I'll help you, sir. <laughs> Okay, Afro Samurai. Afro I was Samurai. gonna say Afro Jack Afro for some reason. Samurai. For people, people, this is a. Uh, it's you know how Samuel Jackson is. They got Samuel Jackson to do the voice. Yeah. So, uh, but it's such a great uh, anime. I love anime. I love. I'm kind of a fan of it all, really. Two D, three D. You know. The silly younger, you know, the younger preschool type of 2D animation, all the way up to the cerebral uh, Akira type of animation, where you have to watch it a couple of times to kind of really absorb what they're doing. And I know uh, anime, true Japanese anime, is really cerebral, and the graphics and the animation is oh yeah so well done. Um, and they have such a way of telling the story that I love that too. So, I mean, I kind of love it all. I really I, do love I'm it all. I'm with you. Like, I love it all. Like, there's something to find in everything, I think. Um, and story is king. So, yeah. The, if the story's sure. good, then. For you know. sure. I'm telling you. Um, well, I, I, I'm definitely, I mean, I know you could be on here a while. <laughs> but definitely, uh, we are going to have a part two. Uh, Please, man. Sure, uh, because like I said, uh, like I told you when I was talking to you about uh, being on the show, mm -hmm. I don't really try to have guests on. I try to have friends on. And yeah. I had the, the great privilege of being able to become friends with James, Joshua, Andre, and all the other people that I connected with. Uh, for sure. And actually, you'll find this interesting. One of the people, uh, he hasn't booked yet, but we did have a call, uh, Ray Billingsley, who does uh, Curtis, the comic strip Curtis. Really? Yes. He's, you I, think know, I heard of that. The black, uh, he's really one of the old few black syndicated comic strips out there. Curtis. Oh, Wow. Um, and we connected and got to talk and a great conversation. And like I said, he still got a book to be on the show. But he was telling me about, uh, and I was telling him, yeah, you know, when I was growing up, Charles Schultz was a big thing. He said, yeah, I know Charles. I used to go over to his house and he would okay. give me advice and stuff like that. And I was like, man, this is such an amazing story. And so, like I said, I've been, so blessed to be able to connect with people from the, the space that I love that have such great stories. And so I am so blessed uh, to be able to call you friend, James. Like I said, we have a, a, a kind of a kindred spirit there and have an opportunity to laugh. And I can see we have a great uh, kindred sense of humor. For sure. Absolutely. We're on the same page. <laughs> I appreciate you so much for, for being on the show. And I'm definitely, definitely going to have you back on uh, for a part two, for sure. Uh, like I said, you've been so gracious. Looking forward to seeing what content that you put out and come out with and definitely know that there's going to be a space where we're going to be able to work together and uh, collaborate with on too. Like I said, you know, we've already kind of talked about a lot of things that, that we have in common and are wanting to do uh, for sure. So I thank you so much for thank uh, you, man. Thanks for having me. For sure. I appreciate it. Uh, be safe where you are. 
have a great Thanksgiving for sure. Um, people, if you want to connect with uh, James, he is on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure that you connect with him there. He is also on Facebook as well, James Mosley II. Uh, so, uh, no James Mosley the third, just the first and second. Not yet. Not uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, we have fun here, man. We have fun. <laughs> that was fun. We have fun. Mr. Kendrick Hardy. Great. Oh, that's my guy. We appreciate that. Mr. Darren. Uh, hold on here. Mr. Oh, wow. Darren. Give us a great interview and way to kill it. Oh, James, Mr. Oh, Gerald, thanks for providing the platform. For sure, I am looking forward to bringing on so many guests um, to share their journey. Um, their thoughts um, and just their story. Um, as my tag likes to say, stories come in all shades. Stories come in all shades. And everybody loves a well told story, for sure. So we all love that, for sure. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. You know, we are here every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Although I will say now, next week, uh, I will because it's the holiday weekend. I won't be doing a broadcast. I know people will be with their family and friends um, as much as they can during this time. But with it being the holiday weekend, make sure that you come back and join me on the fifth of December because it's going to be a great show for sure. Um, and again, like I said, I am definitely looking forward to having my man uh, James come back and. Uh, Chop it up with me again, for sure. Yep, absolutely, man. Just let me know when later. I hear you. I hear you, uh, James. If you want to hang out in the back, uh, uh, backstage, uh, where I uh, close it out, we can uh, chop it up. Otherwise, uh, you are free to free to, to go there. But I will throw you backstage. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Everybody, give James a round of applause. <laughs> Everybody in the studio, give James a round of applause. I thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother, for the work that you do, for everything that you are putting out there, and uh, just for being who you are. I appreciate that, man. No problem. Thank you again. All right. All right. Everybody, thank you uh, so much, uh, like I said, for tuning in. This was a great show. Uh, like I said, my man James and I have uh, kind of found a little kindred spirit there, and we definitely have a laugh when uh, we get together, for sure. Uh, Miss Rita, appreciate that. Make sure that you tune in. Make sure that you share it um, because I do want to get this out there with uh, all the gusto that I can for sure. Again, connect with me on either YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, and you will get notified of when the show goes live. And I definitely want you to be a part of uh, this community here because I so enjoy having you on here. I so enjoy the guests that I'm able to bring on. And this helps to inspire me that, hey, okay, everybody likes it. So let me keep doing this. So this is something I want to do. Again, thank you for tuning in to The Color of Motion every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, uh, I will not be broadcasting next Saturday because of the holiday weekend, but make sure that you join me on December the 5th back here at it uh, with another great guest and a great show for sure. So with that being said, everybody be safe, do what you're supposed to be doing, and we can get out of this pandemic as quickly as possible. But please, Make sure that you have a great Thanksgiving. Be thankful for the people and friends that you have, family and friends 
that you have around you and celebrate the holiday with love.